hi you guys today we are doing another hair tutorial today we will be doing a 27 piece quick weave install this tutorial i will be using our tray indian tyra one two three when you take the hair out of the box it will have three bundles in the inches one two and three inch that's what it stands for anytime you're buying 27 piece hair i am going to prep the one inch hair out of the three bundles if you have been following me for a while you know that i like to flat iron my tracks prior to installing on my clients this helps to make sure that the quick weave is flat and it takes out a lot of the work and you can space your tracks out enough so that you don't have to have that thick bulky look. Now I'm going to begin laying down my tracks. She is already molded and if you want to see how I mold my clients, I will link the information in the description box of how I do my entire process of molding down my clients. So now I'm going to begin laying down that first track. I do go a little bit underneath the hairline and I do this so that you don't have to worry about the track flipping up as time go by. A lot of people be asking me about why I put it down low like this. You won't get that traditional look. Y'all know how it used to look when the tracks flip up in the back on a 27 piece. This is going to alleviate that issue. Whenever you're laying down your tracks, you want to make sure that you do not lay those tracks very very close together whenever they are too close you will get that bulky look if you want your quick weave to lay flat you have to make sure that you leave enough space in between and even if whenever you get to the shaving down process if you have enough space in between the tracks and you so happen to put a gap in there with your razor you have room to stick another track in between it but whenever you stretch your tracks in the beginning this is going to help you get that natural look and so that you don't have to worry about having so many tracks in your client's head now that i'm done tracking the back for my sideburns i like to start low because sometimes whenever you go too high you tend to get some of their natural hair down in the sideburns so what i like to do is cut a tiny piece and i don't space them too close together because whenever you get ready to wave this side or if your client choose to wave the sides you don't want that hair to be too thick then you have then the hair is too thick for you to wave then you have to go in and do all just all of this extra work so just to eliminate that issue just do not place those tracks too close together whenever you're doing the sideburns Now that you've done the back and the sides, now you're going to take that track and you're going to go around the entire head. You're, you're always going to look at your guide as the top of the ear and the temple area. And also, make sure those tracks are facing towards the face. This is going to help make sure that you don't have any gaps whenever you are going in to wave the sides. And another thing you want to make sure that the thinnest areas of the track you want to make sure that they are filled in because if you don't whenever you wave the hair being that the hair will be wet what's going to happen is you're going to be able to see that track so you want to always fill in any gaps if that track is a little thin in certain areas When you start your second length, this is where you're going to go ahead and identify where you're going to place that lace closure. At this point, this is where all of your tracks will stop. If you notice, every time that I lay down another row of tracks, I always go to that guide where my closure will lay in the back.
when you get to the front of the head you will take that third length bundle and you will just go from side to side all the way until you get to the back your ultimate goal is to to track until you come down to a small circle to lay your closure in the back and this is another view as well so that you guys can see how I'm going in a U motion when I'm laying down my tracks. I will be using the closure that came out of the pack to put in the back of the head. You can do any type of closure that you like. Even sometimes when I do my lace, I like to use a piece of lace to give it a more realistic look. But for this look, I'm only going to use the closure out of the pack. Also, some people like to do their closures on their own. You can make them how you want to. There's really no right or wrong way. It only... The only thing that matters is that you have a flawless look whenever your client is done. Now I'm going to begin shaving down the back of her hair all the way around and I am using a razor comb with a single blade and I do have the guard off of my razor as you can see and I do apologize this angle is really really awkward but you can see me do a lot of this razor cutting in all of my other videos of my 27 piece styles but all you're going to do is light hand use a light hand to do this because you don't want to gash any um, any spots in the weave where you could possibly expose your tracks but like I said in the beginning if you don't lay those tracks too close together, you can always go in and add more if you so happen to mess up. After I'm done razoring her hair, I go in and I add in some extra layers in the top. This is going to give it that custom cut look. Even though you won't have to go in and do any curling, you can if you want to. But the hair straight out of the pack gives it a very flawless look. But you do have to do a little bit of customization and cutting in any extra layers if you like. But also, it also takes those straggly ends off of the hair. So you can definitely do this. All you're doing is really pulling it up at a 90 degree and cutting a little bit of the hair off on the ends. Pull it out on the sides. And that's all you're going to do. After you are done laying down all of your tracks, please make sure that you go in and remove any extra strings that are left in the hair. Now I'm 
now we are almost done she wants her hair to be kind of waved on the side it gives it a natural finish but you can go ahead and kind of comb the hair in place so that you can see how the hair is laying so all i'm going to do now is kind of take out a little bit of bulk on the front so that it's thinner whenever you wave weave it gets very very thick on the sides so you have to thin that hair out right now i'm going to go in and give her a taper I am using my peanut trimmers by wall and you can get these out of Sally's Beauty or either any beauty supply store they are very very reasonable in pricing lately I've been using these but y'all know my all-time favorite is my Andes T outliners make sure that you are careful around your clients ear you don't want to cut them with your trimmers so pull that client ear back and then try to cut around it what I do is when I get to the back, I try to go down a little bit so that I don't have to worry about as weeks go by, they won't have to worry about their natural hair peeping out from the back. Make sure that you go around that ear as well. Now I'm going to go in with my Aunt Jackie's Phone Wrap Lotion. And if you have never used this before, if you've been following my channel for a while now, y'all know I love this product. It's very, very diluted. And if you've ever tried to wave or mold down any weave, you know that it doesn't really, um, it's not as easy to go along with as it would as it was, if it was someone's natural hair. So I love the fact that this product makes it a lot easier for me to maneuver the hair the way that I need it to go. So make sure that you go and try this product. Now that my client is from underneath the dryer, I'm going to remove the black wrapping paper from around her head. And I did use that to hold the hair in place. So now I'm going to use my Diamonds Oil Sheen by Design Essentials to loosen up the hair. But you can use any type of serum, but I like this sheen spray because it's lightweight as you can see with the foam wrap lotion it molded down very very nicely there's no residue behind it didn't turn white there's nothing left behind it. what i'm going to do right here is thin out those sideburns it was a little thick so i took my razor blade and be very very careful when you do this So right here, I'm going to go in with my thinning shears and the shears that I'm using is a part of my signature set. So if you want to purchase a pair, they are for sale. I'm running a special for $150 for a set and they are custom and they fit very, very nicely in your hands. They're not too heavy and they're custom designed. And the more you practice with thinning shears, the more you will see what they do. Whenever you are looking at a style and you see that it has a lot of bulk, don't go in with a razor comb to thin it out. Grab your thinning shears and thin it out that way so that you don't have to worry about seeing any lines with the thinning shears. It gives it a soft look. So if you're someone who's going for a very, very natural look, 
you can go in with your thinning shears and thin it out as much as possible but whenever you're laying down your tracks the best thing to do is to use hair that's not as thick so you will use a 28 piece hair by a different brand this 27 piece hair in particular is very very thick so if you like this video and you want to learn more please make sure that you like comment share and subscribe to my youtube channel